Hello everybody, this is Code2J. Today I'm going to show you what Airflow connection is and how to use it with Postgres operator. Sounds exciting? Let's get started. Normally when we build an ETL DAG, we need to connect to some external services. For example, database servers like MySQL, Postgres, cloud servers like Azure, AWS, etc., and many other types of servers. To connect those, we need the credentials like host, username, password, port, and etc. You can create and manage them easily by Airflow connection, which can be used by corresponding operators. In Airflow web server UI, if we mouse over the admin, we can see the connections menu. Let's click it. Here you can see all the connections that have been created. Let's have a look at the Add Connection page by clicking the plus button. Here you can define the name of the connection and create whatever type of connection you want. If the connection type is missing, you can just install the corresponding provider packages or create your own customized connection. Just view all the necessary fields, click save. We can create a connection which is ready to be used. Okay, now you know what a connection is. Let's learn how to use it with Postgres operator. To demonstrate the Postgres operator, we need a Postgres database. Let's expose the Postgres database we used in the Airflow project by adding ports 5432-5432 to the Postgres services in the Docker Compose YAML file. Then we can recreate the Postgres container. Let's connect it use the dBeaver, which is an open source cross-platform database management tool. If you don't have it, just go to browser search dBeaver, click download and pick the one that matches with your operating system. I already have it. Let's launch it and create a new connection. We select PostgreSQL. Then we input localhost as host, username and password is Airflow. Then we click the test connection to verify it. It may ask you to install PostgreSQL JDBC driver if you don't have that. Just install it and try the test connection again. Once it says connected, we click finish. Then we can right click on the databases, click create new database. We name it test. If we expand it, we can see it is empty. Great, we have a brand new PostgreSQL database. Let's use an Airflow DAG to create a table and insert some values. Let's go back to VS Code and create a DAG file called DAG with Postgres operator.py and open it. First, we are going to import any packages we need. Then we define the default arcs. After that, we initialize a DAG by setting up its DAG ID, start day, and schedule interval. Let's create our first task using the Postgres operator. It requires mainly three parameters, task ID, of course, a connection ID to tell the operator which Postgres database to connect to, and a SQL query statement which will be executed. Let's go to the Airflow web server UI to create one. We click the plus button and give Postgres localhost as the connection ID. We have to select the connection type to Postgres. Schema is the database name. In our case, it's test. Username and password are Airflow. Port is 5432 as we did in the Docker Compose YAML file. For the host, we can either give the Postgres service name defined in the Docker Compose YAML file, which is Postgres in our case, or localhost. 
if we are using Docker desktop application or Mac OS or Windows to connect localhost from a container, using localhost will not work. Instead, we need to use host.docker.internal. Now click save. We can see Postgres connection in the overview. Let's copy the connection ID and go back to VS Code. Set it to the Postgres connection ID parameter. Then in the SQR statement, we just create a table if not exists named deck runs with column data time as a date and deck ID data type character varying. And the primary key is the combination of data time and deck ID columns. Save the file and go back to the browser to refresh the page. Select the DAG and start it. Oops, the task failed. Let's check the log and see what's wrong. It says cannot translate the host name host.docker.local. We had a typo. It should be host.docker.internal. Let's fix it. Clear the task run and let it run again. Oops, it fails again. Let's check the log. It says we had a syntax error in our SQL query statement. We missed a T in the character variant data type. Let's go to VS Code to change it. Let's clear the task runs and wait for its execution. Now it succeeds finally. We can see from the log that our created table SQL query statement has been executed. Let's go to Dviver to verify it. Great. When we refresh the table, we can see it created the table backgrounds exactly as we defined. Let's create another task which inserts the DAC ID and execution date into the DAC run tables using the Postgres operator. We set the task ID, Postgres connection ID, which will be the same. And in SQL, we type insert into DAC runs, parenthesis, DT and comma DAC ID values, parenthesis with DS in the double curly brackets and deck dot deck ID also in two curly brackets. DT is the deck runs execution date and deck ID is the deck ID, which are set by default by Airflow engine and can be accessed by putting the variable name into two curly brackets. Let's build the task dependencies, update the deck version then we go back to the browser to refresh the page. Select the newest DAG. We then start it. Oops, it fails. Let's check the log to see what the issue is. It says template DT is undefined. Let's search the Airflow macros documentation. The execution date template variable is DS not DT. Let's go back to VS Code to update it. Then we go back to the browser to clear the current task runs and let it run again. Now it works. From the log, we can see there's one row inserted into the database table deck runs with the execution date 2021 December 19th and the DAC ID DAC with Postgres operator version 2. Let's also clear and rerun the latest DAC. Once it finishes, we can see it also succeeds inserting the correct execution date and DAC ID as shown in the log. Let's verify it using the dbeaver. We select all the rows 
in the table deck rounds. We can see the number of rows is the same as the number of deck rounds. In Airflow, it is recommended to delete data before insert to avoid data duplication or primary key violation. For example, if we cleared one of the successful insert tasks, it tries to insert data which already exists in the table. In the end, it will fail since it violates the primary key constraint. Let's fix this by adding a delete task before insert. We can copy the insert task and rename its task ID and change the SQL from insert into delete from DAG rounds where DT equals DS and DAG ID equals DAG dot DAG ID. Then we rebuild the task dependencies with task 3 as the upstream of task 2 and downstream of task 1. Save the file, update the DAG version, and then refresh the page. Oops, we have an error. It says task 3 is not defined. Let's go back to VS Code to change our delete operator task variable name to task 3. Save the file, then refresh the page and select the newest DAG to start it. Once it finishes successfully, we can check in the dbeaver there are two rows for the newest DAG with date December 19th and 20th. Let's clear the December 19th DAG ROM. Wait for its execution. Boom! We can see it succeed without violating the primary key constraint since we delete before inserting data. Let's double check in the dbeaver. We can see that we have exactly two records for the newest DAG ID. That's it! You have learned what the Airflow connection is, how to create a connection and use it with Postgres operator to create tables, data deletion, and insert. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section. And last but not least, which Airflow topics do you want to see in the next video? Please comment below. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.